As you know, I was here for the groundbreaking and the grand opening of this particular community-based outpatient clinic. I'm on the Armed Services Committee, and uh, veterans are a very, very important concern of mine. There's a personal reason, too. I have a stepson and daughter-in-law who are active-duty Marines. Uh, they are veterans of the, of the wars of Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, but also, this whole week, I'm actually trying to do what I can to focus on our veterans. I'm getting all around the district uh, in many, many towns already. I'll be doing more today. Um, this is something that's really important, especially with the week of the 4th of July, as we remember you know, our Independence Day and the freedoms that we have and those people who are willing to make the ultimate sacrifice to protect our freedoms and those who've come back to make sure that we honor them and treat them with the dignity and the respect they deserve. College? Yeah, there's, there's been a lot of legislation over the last couple of years, all of which I put my name on uh, to make sure that these folks are treated, as I said, with the dignity and the respect they deserve. We can't let anyone who is willing to go overseas and make that ultimate sacrifice and fight for our country, we can't let them come back to this country and expect that they're going to have to fight for a job or they're going to have to fight for a roof over their head. So there's a lot of legislation that's been passed and pending that will help those folks. And I've been able to expand the post 9-11 GI benefit as well, uh, not only for those who've gone overseas under what's called Title 10, uh, for them to come back and get a college education, but those Title 32 folks who engage in domestic homeland security who are in the Guard and Reserve as well. And then we have to take care of them uh, as far as their particular medical, physical, or mental concerns might be, and I've been able to get through legislation to help the National Guard to embed a mental health provider in every unit here stateside so that we can cut down on the suicide rates, do everything we can for the mental health, not just the physical health of our Guard and Reserve as well. Question. I think it has to do with a lot of things. I think the Vietnam War uh, was such a bad situation for America, and there was so much disagreement about sort of the mission of the Vietnam War uh, that uh, veterans were not treated very well at that time, as we know, and I think we've had a maturing process here in America since then, especially since the two Gulf Wars in Afghanistan, where we have a much greater appreciation for our veterans as a, as a country. Uh, and I think that's really, really important. That's why a lot of what we've seen the past few years, we've gotten through on a bipartisan basis. Two different presidents from two different parties, Congresses from different parties. I think we've just matured as a country, and I think that's really, really a good thing. Well, I think it's great. I think that the veterans should be given preference. As I said, they have been willing to make the ultimate sacrifice. They voluntarily went into the military to protect us, and protect our freedoms. So I think there's absolutely nothing wrong whatsoever with giving veterans preference when it comes to jobs and hiring.